Are you a photographer or videographer running out of storage for the media and the content that you make? Or are you constantly searching for the perfect hard drive or the way to store your content? Before we get any further, I just wanna let you know that this is not an ad, this is not sponsored, this is just the way that I like to do it. This is the way that I've found works for me. Um, I've been doing this for over 16 years, I think now. And it's just it's just what works for me. I'm gonna take you from the beginning to where I am now. And at this point, probably per year, I'm using anywhere from eight terabytes to 12 terabytes of storage per year with the content that I'm making, whether it's for myself or for our clients. And so I kind of wanted to just do this video to show you guys the, the, the hard drives that I like to use, show you the ones that I've started with, the ones that I've used in the past, and what I'm using now and why I like what I'm using now versus some of the stuff that I've had in the past. At this point, all of the content that I'm making, I'm at a point now where I'm looking at purchasing a RAID system that holds upwards of 64 terabytes, um, something that will last me quite a while, but that's not the way that I necessarily work. I don't wanna work on current projects off of the RAID system. And I'll get into more of the why, but until then, let's just kind of start off with what I started with my first ever hard drive ever. And then I'll take you to the ones that I'm using today, the ones that work best for 4K video, the ones that work for high megapixel images. Anyways, uh, some of my first hard drives, and these are dusty, but <laughs> this is the first hard drive I think I, I owned. If I had one before this, it's long gone and probably in the trash. It's interesting because I don't even think this one tells you what the space is on it, but I wanna say that this was a 500 gig hard drive. And I think at the time probably cost me 250 bucks. Uh, now today, this little My Passport thing would probably cost you $25. This one, I don't know if it actually even still works. Um, I've since backed the data up onto hard drives that I now have. And I'll talk about that more as I get into it. Again, this one um, is just like this one. Uh, I think this one is one terabyte, I believe. And I numbered the two because they are uh, identical. And I haven't since been doing that. Not that I don't need to, I just haven't. And then I think the next one I purchased was this other, my passport. And I believe that this is a two terabyte drive. As you can see, like as things progressed, as as storage and files progressed, I, I started getting bigger hard drives. So this is a two terabyte drive. Since then, got one of these and I had, a few more of these. Sadly, <laughs> I had a car stolen in 2018 and, and I lost, I think, two of these drives or three of these drives, but this is a Lacey drive. I have since not been using Lacey drives and I, I think for a while it was kind of the industry standard. As things have progressed, uh, I've started using the G Technology drives. I haven't had a Lacey drive fail, but I've heard of a lot of other people that have had issues with the Lacey drives failing. I haven't had that issue. Maybe if I plug this in, it would fail. I don't know. You know, I haven't, I probably haven't plugged this drive in for three years and I think I've got it backed up on to these other desktop drives that I have back here. Moving forward from that, I have this one and I purchased this kind of just kind of like an emergency thing and maybe I just damaged it, but um, <laughs> this, I, it, it works. It gets the job done. It stores stuff like I, like I would need it to, but it's not, I don't enjoy it, it's not great to work off of. I haven't gone and tested this drive out, compared it like speed wise to one of these other uh, G technology drives, but I just, from my experience, it just felt like this one was slower. Not to say that it is, but it, it, maybe that's just my opinion, but it felt like it was slower. Moving on, this drive, this was one of the first G technology drives that I purchased before G technology was bought by SanDisk. That's a big reason why the rest of the drives that I'm using are G Technology. SanDisk makes G Technology drives. It's interesting because SanDisk is such a big name within the whole hard drive and data storage space. They're just they're just a reliable company. The G Technology drives are a lot more robust than pretty much any other drives out there. You'll see that pretty much everything else that I have at this point is a G Technology drive. So 
So I have two blue ones. These ones are both four terabytes. And then I have these three ones that are four terabytes. And then this one that's plugged in right now that's also four terabytes. Uh, the first solid state drive that I got was 500 gigs. And then this one is one terabyte. Again, you can tell maybe inside that um, there's like some blue. So these are before it was owned by SanDisk, put the name on. And this one is a two terabyte solid state drive. The solid states is really what I like to work with and have on the road. This is what I like to empty. And then I load onto these. And then after I'm done with these, they go on to something that is a little more stationary and just for backup. If you've got the footage and you've already shot it, there's no reason to license it from somebody else. That's my opinion. Another thing with that is like, you know, if you have shots for clients and stuff as a photographer or videographer is being able to tell your client that you will have their stuff down the road like six years from now, because you never know when a client might call you up and say, hey, we wanna re-license that image for web use or for email or whatever. If they can rely on you as a credible source to keep your stuff backed up and saved, you'll just be that, further, that much further ahead. The other cool thing is as years have gone by, it's cool to be able to look back at all the stuff that you've done, go through it and figure out whether it be, you know, just for yourself or if you wanna make a book and really create something cool for yourself. Let's say you are a photographer and you've gone in to the Alaska range and you've done a lot of ski uh, mountaineering stuff, um, similar to Jimmy Chin or something, right? So you've, you've got all of these years that you can go through and grab all of your best work and compile it together to make a really beautiful book, similar to Chris Burkhardt and his surfing stuff, right? So if you have your stuff stored um, properly, you can be able to do that in years to come. As far as that goes, that's pretty much just my take, a little down and dirty of what I like to do as far as storage. Again, the solid states are great because they're robust. I can drop it, throw it around, and the data and storage inside is protected. Um, and again, like not to say that these aren't robust. These, I have honestly have not had any of these fail and I take them with me everywhere I go. But, well, not everywhere. But my point being is these are way more robust and if I can, uh, I try and keep myself to taking the solid states with me. And, and then these are just, you know, when these get full, these are a lot cheaper versions. So if, like, let's, let's just talk about that for a minute. So the price of a, of a two terabyte solid state drive, you're looking uh, anywhere from 250 to $300 maybe. Don't quote me on that one. As far as a four terabyte hard drive, again, this is spinning, so it's not durable like a solid state drive is. Your four terabyte, you're probably looking around 150 bucks um, or something. Whereas a four terabyte solid state drive, you might be looking at close to $500. Again, that's why I use these just kind of as a working drive. This is like current projects and things that I'm doing. I use it, fill it up, and then as things are, get old, you know, three, four months down the road, I'll take some of the old projects off of the solid states and move them to one of these again, and then also back them up to a regular desktop kind of drive. That's the way I like to do it. Hopefully some of this helps you out. Again, if you have any suggestions on RAID systems, I'm currently looking to purchase one because I'm just at that point where like, I don't wanna be purchasing more of these. Not to say that I won't purchase more of these, it's just I, I'm kind of at that point where these need to be just emptied and backed up twice on a RAID system. Yeah, anyway, so that's today's video. Uh, please like and subscribe, comment below again, um, if you would. Go check out some of my other videos. Again, this is just what works for me. This doesn't work for everybody. Um, I'm sure someone will have some feedback on how they're doing it and how it's better than what I'm doing. That's great. I'm open to any feedback on ways that I can improve what I'm doing, but this is how I'm doing it. As a photographer of 16 years, again, it might not be the best, but um, hopefully it helps someone that is in a wor worse off situation than I am. So anyway, uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.